uh, yes, uh, this is precisely why we have entitled our talk today, Learn a Language, Meet a People. <coughs> Being aware about cultural differences make us interculturally competent and help us to manage intercultural encounters. Intercultural encounters can be better understood by learning foreign languages. Knowing foreign languages allow us to fit in uh, like the locals, no matter where we go, where we are. At this point, I would like to highlight that it is a complete urban myth that one has to completely master one language before attempting to learn another. Yes, and I hope the students listening it do not adopt such thinking. It would be a waste to let the, let the opportunity of learning a new language and consequently to have an exciting career just slip away. Now, before we delve any further into the courses that we offer, I think it's a good idea to present some numbers that are significant to our Centre for Language Studies, or CLS for short. Could you tell us, our listeners, Sandhya, what the numbers 21 and 10 and 3 stand for? Uh, well, the CLS has been around for 21 years, so it's the 21st anniversary of the Centre this year. The Centre for Language Studies was created in 2001, to serve the foreign language needs of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. It helps students acquire a very valuable economic and social uh, resources in today's world of growing globalization and internationalization. Uh, and then number 10, currently 10 Asian languages and three European languages are being offered at the Center for Language Studies. Now, what does the number 12 represent, Daniel? Well, there are 12 minor, minor programs that students can choose from. We were the first univers university in Singapore to offer a minor in language studies in 2017. With a growing number of students over the years and the call for a better recognition of our students' efforts in mastering a foreign language, it was about time that we did so. What about, what about the number 99, Sandhya? Uh, 99 is the number of faculty members at the CLS. If we combine both full-time and part-time faculty members, Having produced numerous teaching awards winners in recent years, the center is firmly committed to excellence in teaching. It is the center's aim to maintain and improve its high teaching standard by engaging in research and facilitating professional development in foreign language teaching. Uh, what about the last two numbers, Daniel? Yes, the last two numbers, 3,400 represent the number of students that are enrolled in all our, class, our, our courses each semester. And 13 is the number of overseas immersion programs that students can look forward to if they choose to embark on a language homestay program in a country where the target language is spoken. I shall not say too much about this now because we will cover this point again shortly in the presentation. Now, Sandhya, would you do the honor of presenting the 13 languages that we teach? Yes, of course. Uh, CLS teaches 10 Asian languages, which we can break up into four groups as follows. The East Asian languages taught are Japanese, Korean, Mandarin, Chinese. The Southeast Asian languages taught are Vietnamese, Malay, Thai, and Indonesian. For the West are two South Asian languages, Hindi and Tamil, and one West Asian language, Arabic. And then there are three Western European languages, which are French, German, and Spanish. I see. Well, maybe we should also tell our viewers about the languages, languages, um, language courses offered um, and how they are organized. How many modules are there per language program, for example? Uh, are they classified as elementary, intermediate, and so on? Uh, yeah, for Arabic, Chinese, Hindi, Malay, and Indonesian, modules can be of elementary, intermediate, and advanced levels. And there are two modules to complete under each level. Tamil is an exception due to the low enrollment rates, uh, so only two elementary modules are taught. But what about other languages, Daniel? Okay, so for other languages, um, like German, Spanish, Korean, and Thai, there are eight different modules rather than six. The highest levels uh, are the seventh and the eighth level modules, which are classified as higher advanced modules. French is somewhat similar with an exception because it wouldn't be French if it didn't show any exceptions, right? For French, the seventh and the eighth level modules have now been calibrated uh, to be accessible immediately after the sixth level module. So whereas in the past, students had to wait for uh, wait one full semester before being able to take the next highest module, it's now possible for, for all students who have completed French 6 to immediately take 
the higher level, higher advanced module in the following semester, regardless of which semester they are in. Um, and now we are left with one language program that we have not covered. What program is that, Sonia? Uh, yes, uh, the Japanese program. The mod because Japanese is also always an exception. So module for Japanese also go all the way up to higher advanced, but there are more modules in some levels, like intermediate and advanced level. For example, after completing Japanese 1 and 2 and the elementary level, there are three modules to complete at the intermediate level. And for advanced and higher advanced levels, the modules there don't have to be taken in sequence, which means students can take them in any order that suits them best. Now we have seen that there are modules that are elementary, intermediate, advanced, and higher advanced. But what does this really mean? Well, the differences can be explained in terms of the outcomes and skills that students can expect to acquire. So at the elementary level, for instance, students can handle basic conversations in daily life and personal information. At the intermediate level, students can have more complex conversations on personal interests. What about advanced and higher advanced, Sandhya? Uh, advanced, you will be able to hold longer discussions. You will be amazed to discover that you can do extended oral presentation with fluency. And higher advanced, after finishing your higher advanced level, you will be able to do a detailed speech with supporting ideas, convey subsidiary points, and give relevant examples. Wow, that sounds quite advanced. Now, so to recap, students can look forward to learning any one of the 13 languages that we offer. And for 12 of those languages, you can expect to reach advanced or higher advanced levels within three to four years. And uh, eligibility for language modules. So anyone who is studying at NUS in any faculty or program is eligible to take up our language modules. They can learn a language, they can use it as their, as their unrestricted electives, which you call UEs. And if they are interested, they can also do a minor in language studies. However, they must take note of whether they are complete beginners or they have some prior knowledge. If they are complete beginners, they can take our 1000 modules, which is level one. And if they have some prior knowledge, they have to take a placement test to determine which level they should be placed at. For that, they should write to CLS office or language conveners. And of course, students may select the satisfactory, unsatisfactory option for any of our language modules, so long as they have not exceeded the number of SEO modules. Do all students need to be complete beginners, Sandhya? Uh, if they intend to do level one, they have to be complete beginners. But if they have prior knowledge, they have to go for placement test and they can start from higher levels like level two or three based on their proficiency in the language. Placement tests are done usually before the semester starts. For semester one, if the plus, uh, as for semester one, the placement test will be held from mid-July to first week of August. And for semester two, from December and December to first week of January. For those who are registered for the first module and if they have some prior knowledge but they didn't take the placement test before the semester start, there is still a chance for them to do the placement test. After they have declared that they have some prior knowledge, they will be invited to sit for the placement test. There's the exception of students opting to take French, German or Korean under the language preparation program, especially if they intend to do an exchange semester in a French-speaking, German-speaking or Korean-speaking university. For this program, students have to be complete beginners and must take the first four levels within their first two undergraduate years. This table shows the modules that one should take in their first and second years before embarking on their exchange semester. Notice that there is an opportunity for students learning French and German to receive the Language Immersion Award at the end of their first year to undergo a linguistic immersion program. Yes, if you, are, uh, if you study French or German and would like to visit Europe to experience it firsthand, this is the ideal opportunity for you. The CLS offered a Language Immersion Award for students learning French and German. These awards give students the opportunity to experience life in a non-English speaking environment. And the program will be invaluable in increasing your French or German language proficiency. 
The application for Language Immersion Award is open to year one language preparation program, which is LPP. Students who are taking French 2 or German 2 in the semester 2. Uh, how about minor in language studies, Daniel? Yes, we mentioned that NUS is one of the is, is the first university to offer a minor in language studies in Singapore. And there are a total of 12 minors that students can choose from. They can choose from a minor in Arabic language studies, Indonesian language studies, Chinese language studies for non-natives, French language studies, German language studies, Hindi language studies, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Spanish, Thai, and Vietnamese language studies. The MC requirements for uh, minor... so what are the MC requirements for, for the minor for language studies, Sandhya? Yes, the MC require we have the MC requirements for minor. If you want to graduate with a minor in language studies, you have two options. Uh, the first one is to take five language modules for 20 MCs or four language modules for 16 MCs and one cross department module. Daniel, would you like to add on? Yes, please take note that the language modules have to include the sixth level one. So uh, students who take the first level through to the fifth level may have fulfilled the number of modules, but they will still fail to meet the criteria of including the sixth level. This is to ensure a minimal advanced competency is reached before students graduate from our programs. This slide shows the overview of the details for the language studies minor. The first point was already covered earlier. Um, what are the other conditions for the minor, Sandhya? Uh, all the modules must be read at NUS. If you have read modules outside NUS, then it will not count towards the fulfillment of minor in language studies. Unless, of course, the modules have been successfully mapped to the ones being, being offered at the CLS with the identical module codes. Yeah. Are there requirements on the starting modules to meet the requirements? Well, um, the starting module for all students without prior knowledge has to be the level one module, whose code ends with the number 1201. However, we also welcome students with prior knowledge to join us in any of the, any of the higher language modules if they successfully get placed after, get, after taking the placement test. So however, there are all these modules that um, if you, if you start with these modules, you will not be able to fulfill the number of modules because you, you are starting on a too higher level and therefore you will not uh, acquire five modules, for example, for that language. So in those cases, we will advise students to choose a different language. Apart from linguistic proficiency, we also emphasize cultural proficiency. Uh, how can you use the language socially and culturally appropriately? One way to do this is through immersion program. Several language programs regularly organize immersion programs to target language countries and regions. You will then be able to enjoy homestay or hostel stay experience as well as abundant opportunities to apply what you have acquired in classroom to real day-to-day -day life. Back to you, Daniel. Yes. Now, regarding the student experience at the Center for Language Studies, at the, at the CLS, our classes are as far as possible kept to an optimal size of 18 to 22 students. Smaller class size gives more opportunity to make lessons more interactive. Our lessons are task-based, learner-centered, so as to enhance learning and make lessons more enjoyable. Our teachers are also very experienced and well-trained in the pedagogy of languages and in fact, many of them have been winning Teaching Excellence Awards. Our students' reviews are a testimony to the quality of, uh, quality of the center's teaching. One of our past students commented that this must be one of the best and fun modules I have ever taken. The only module where I can make mistakes and laugh myself silly. Another student said, the learning is very interactive with enough attention given to everyone. Another remark was that even though learning, uh, even though learning a new language is no easy task at all, the purpose provided by the positive aspect of the program makes learning not such a tedious experience. Last but not least, students liked how systematic the lessons were, which makes vocabulary learning much easier. Even grammar seems much more manageable because there's good flow from one lesson to the next. We have now come to the end of the presentation. 
Um, we would like now to show you a video presentation of our center for you to have a better idea of some of the items presented earlier in the talk. Open it in a separate window. Yeah, it's okay. Hi, my name is George, and I'm a I pick up a new language out of curiosity. Language is like a key to a door with many surprises behind it, and it's hard not to be curious. CLS gave me language skills that are practical and useful in real-life settings. I took up Vietnamese language because I see the impact it can have in the emerging economy in the current world. I was mesmerized by the Thai and Vietnamese languages. I decided to take languages. I decided to take up Chinese because I believe that it will be beneficial for my career. It is the least stressful module as compared to my other core modules. Besides, I've also established strong connections and cross-cultural friendships. Language classes were my favourite out of all the classes. Lessons were really interesting. Hindi classes were super fun and memorable. It was the class that I always looked forward to. Learning a language is challenging and requires great determination, but you will be proud of yourself after completing it. The teachers at CRS always made the classes so engaging and fun, we were always motivated to step outside our comfort zones. I like the smile you get when you go overseas and surprise locals by speaking to them in their local tongue. Knowing a new language, we are also able to engage in deeper conversations with the locals during our SEP immersion. I can now confidently communicate with people in Japan. Now I can understand the way the Germans think. As a community engager, my ability to communicate in Bahasa Indonesia has enabled me to break down boundaries with various communities in Singapore. Mastering new languages also enhances resumes. My language skills have helped me secure my current job and increase my market value. I highly encourage you to learn Hindi at CLS. Definitely a must do. Learn a language that you are genuinely interested in and start early. Start early. Your workload isn't as heavy in your freshman year. Open your eyes on a global and international scale. Start early in your academic career. Very meaningful. Experience. Unforgettable. Life-changing. Exciting. CLS is a great place to start your language learning journey, so don't hesitate to pick up a new language today. So um, I believe that there may be questions. This is a, it's a question that's not really related to. Uh, it was so, so uh, okay. The somebody is asking what is. Uh, I will take on Stephen Fresh's input hypothesis. Um, it's definitely a hypothesis that, that stands um, because it's, it's still around after so many years and, and uh, it definitely makes more sense. I mean, it definitely, definitely makes um, learning easier when you understand what you are learning rather than just... Um... So basically, the input hypothesis is that you, you will learn better when... Uh, Whatever input goes into your brain is uh, understandable. It has to be understandable inputs. Yeah. So that's of course uh, an important hypothesis in language learning. I'm not sure if I answered the question, but yeah. Sandhya, you want to add on? No, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, we have one in chat. I don't know if from a student that uh, if I don't join LPP due to prior experience in the language, but continue taking language mod modules to fulfill a minor, will I be able to join immersion program too? 
Uh, yes. Um, okay, so the immersion programs, there are two types. There are th those that are offered um, uh, as a language immersion award. So those obviously are um, the priorities for students who are doing it from uh, as a language preparation, uh, doing it from scratch. Um, but you can, of course, tap on the program to join in the the, the immersion programs. Um, we have students who are either self-paying or they do still get some subsidy if they uh, through, through some of the programs that are offered. Yeah, so it's still possible to try and learn the immersion program without being a complete beginner. Any more questions? So, um, Sanya would like to tell, oh, sorry, that the Japanese language process have decreased in popular compared to the past. Uh, okay, I'm not able to answer this question because it's um, specifically relating to the Japanese language courses. Um, I would be surprised if the workload has dropped tremendously because um, Japanese language courses are the, um, uh, sort of apart from the other language courses because they actually have more more modules per level. So for example, um, just now there was a slide that I, I forgot to switch to, but for example, um, in the elementary and intermediate, there are actually more than two modules uh, to. So for example, if you are in Japanese... Um, uh, intermediate, they have three. They have to complete three modules. Yeah, yeah. so whereas the other programs only have two, lab, two language modules, two semesters for each of those levels, um, the Japanese has got more modules. So in other words, you actually have to do a lot more to, to reach. Uh, I don't think that the workload has dropped. How the placement tests are like? So that depends um, on the language programs. Um, some language programs uh, do it online, um, as in you, you, um, you have a link to go on to, and then you just have to answer the questions and uh, the results will be, um, will be sent um, and sent back to you. Um, some are face to face. Um, you need to add Sanya? Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, it depends on the language module. Some some they do online and some face to face to check your proficiency level, and based on that, you will be placed. So it, it will have uh, some oral components and sometimes written. And uh, if you have proficiency, then maybe written and uh, other parts as well. Right. We have one that uh, O level certificate in the language. Would it be possible to take enough modules to still uh, graduate? Okay, so uh, with an O level certificate, it, um, generally you would have reached level B1, for example. Uh, although we have students who, even though they had O levels, um, it was quite a while back, and then they still um, get placed in you know the third or fourth level, which is the intermediate level module. Uh, it doesn't matter which well, what level you end up in, so long as you have. Um, a total of five modules to, to, to take. So for example, if you have uh, level eight, seven, six, five, four, if you start with four, you'll be able to finish. Um, if that program has but eight levels, you can start with uh, four and still have all five modules uh, to fulfill your minor requirements. This is for SCP, maybe you have to. Which level of module do we have to reach to be able to? Okay, uh, well, from experience, uh, students who have completed two years, in other words, four semesters of uh, the language program, um, would go on the, go on the exchange. Um, even though when they are on exchange, they might be taking modules that are in English, but they are in the, the country where the language is spoken. So, um, yeah, I think you, you can attain third or fourth level language module, which should be good enough. Some even leave after second like, second level. So it, it depends on what the courses you are, uh, are going for. And yeah, there is a lot. If you're doing uh, maybe humanities and you're going to do it in the target, like, target language, then you probably be expected to, to, to know the language more. But just doing um, uh, something more less linguistic than maybe a lower level will be sufficient.
Let's think about that. Any other questions we saw with considerability? Regarding the Japanese LGRPT, I, I can't, I don't know, for example, uh, if the students actually uh, uh, achieve N1 level at the end of the courses, because um, I believe N1 is already um, the, the highest level. And uh, even for other languages, we, which is uh, level, highest level is C2, we don't, we don't even reach that level by the end of the, the, the four years. Of, yeah. yeah. Students usually reach about B1 or B2, uh, sometimes C1. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Hi, everyone. So and uh, just to reach out and ask if there's any other questions for our panelists, uh, you can just either raise your hand, you can put, put it in the Q&A, or you can just ask them live. Uh, you just unmute your mic. So we're just reaching out for any last questions for our panelists. Most people are waiting for the recordings. The number of participants are not very high. So or maybe they're on YouTube because they can't mm. they can't ask questions on YouTube. Can mm. they? I, I don't know. I have to check that. <laughs> Hi, okay, so I guess uh, if there's really no other questions, I think uh, we'll end the panel session. Uh, we would like to extend uh, thanks to Dr. Daniel and Dr. Sanya for their time today and really for sharing a, a very informative session on the on the languages itself. So uh, right now, uh, as you can see, uh, we're running a poll uh, to let us know and give us some feedback on the session itself. So if you could just take some time to go through, uh, read, uh, read through the uh, poll and let us know how we can improve, uh, it would be so great. Okay, so uh, let's just end the poll. And again, thank you so much for our panelists today. And uh, thank you all. And we'll see you at the next uh, session at uh, five o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.